Hi there, today I want to talk to you a little bit about spring foods, what to eat and what not to eat according to Chinese medicine. So it's a little bit different than maybe what we traditionally think about here in the United States or in the Western Hemisphere, which is why I wanted to kind of give you a nice counterpoint um, so you can kind of blend those two together and maybe figure out a way that's nice to eat for you um, both through Chinese medicine and kind of this Western stuff with what's in season currently, right? So it's always wonderful to eat with what's in season. Um, in the springtime, I think it's pretty easy to see um, the color associated with spring foods is green, right? We've got all of this new growth and development, all these greens shooting up, um, plants, weeds, everything, right? So it's all these lovely green sprouts. The trees are starting to bud out um, and get their leaves for the year. So the green color for spring, I think we just all naturally associate with spring in general. So that's a great color to look for um, in foods in general in the spring. Um, and then I really wanted to talk about the taste of foods too. That's what's really neat in Chinese medicine is that the seasons especially are associated with tons and tons of things. Um, a movement, um, a, uh, a developmental stage. So for spring, it's, um, it's growth, birth or growth, right? If you think about little seeds sprouting from the earth, um, kind of birthing themselves into the world or growing into the world. Um, we've also got uh, organs that are associated with the spring. So in Chinese medicine, that's liver and gallbladder, which are a little bit different than the traditional Western idea of liver and gallbladder, but they do overlap a little bit in that, um, in their functions. And we'll get into that a little bit as we talk a little bit more about, about the foods and how they're helpful, oops, how they're helpful for um, liver and gallbladder. Um, and then the element for spring is wood. So wood is easy to see, right? Trees, growth, um, maturation, all that good stuff is coming to, to begin over again. We're starting this cycle of life over again in the spring and there's a lot of that growth and push and movement to be something new and enjoying this newness and this renewed sense of self um, as well as food and plants. So um, those are just a few things that are associated with, uh, with the season of spring. Um, and I've written a whole blog post about, oh no, we fell here. There we go. I've written a whole blog post about spring and how it affects you. It's really great to get this kind of insight into all these components about the season because it's not just the foods, um, but it's got a lot of mental and emotional ways that the spring season affects us all. And if we're aware of those, we can kind of really cue into our behavior, um, thoughts, feelings, all kinds of things and maybe understand you know that spring is is usually the best time to start off with a new goal rather than a new year's resolution because you've got the energy of the season behind you in terms of this growth and wanting to experience and expand out into new things whereas winter is much more a time of kind of storage and contraction so um, if you'd like, yeah, check out that article. I run through a whole bunch of correlations from Chinese medicine, and it's great. It gives you a lot more insight into yourself. Um, there's also emotions associated with the season, which is kind of interesting. Um, spring itself is anger and frustration along with the wood element. So anyway, yeah, lots of really interesting kind of cool stuff to correlate. And the more you kind of connect with that, the more you can see the seasons reflected in yourself and influencing your behavior, which is what we want. We want you to kind of yeah, learn and grow and understand how living with the seasons, you can actually kind of um, plan things around what are the best times of year for you to do something and what are your best times of year. Um, if you know your elements, um, everybody has two that are the most predominant in their personality, you can really kind of look at when are the best times for you to do something um, or, oh, hey, I'm going to naturally have a lot more energy this time of year and be really engaged or, you know, this is my season, I really need to kind of slow it down and take a break. Um, so that can be a little bit different for everybody. You can always check out my five element personality test if you want to get into that and see what your elements are. But okay, I digress back to the sour taste. So sour is really interesting, right? If we think about um, eating citrus, which of course is the first example of, of this sour food, I think that's the most easily identifiable for anybody we get this really kind of drawing and contracting sensation in our mouth, right? It's like almost all the liquid has been sucked out of our mouth. So that's exactly what an astringent quality does for us. Um, it's similar where if you've used like witch hazel before at all, that's a strong astringent as well, is that it draws this fluid 
out, right? And then, of course, with the citrus, our salivary glands kind of take over and produce more saliva to fill that in. But this drawing, contracting um, feeling is wonderful because it actually helps to kind of break up and move this heavier, greasier, um, more intense kind of food of the winter that, you know, it sits a little bit. We're trying to maintain our reserves in the winter and that storage. Whereas in the spring, we're starting to come back into abundance again with this new growth and activity. And it's really wonderful to kind of cut through a lot of that stagnation. So wood, the element in general, hate stagnation. They hate to feel stuck very similar to the spring feeling. Um, you know, once spring kicks in, I think we can all kind of feel like we're, we're kind of shedding our winter skin. We're like, okay, we're getting moving again. We're getting into action and planning rather than this kind of little bit more like stagnant state that we use in the winter to conserve our resources. So it's a really fun time. And the astringent kind of quality or the sour quality really gets things moving again. Um, it's another reason why doing some citrus in your water in the morning is really nice, especially for people who are wood constitutions. It just helps to get that liver kind of up and moving a little bit more. Um, so yeah, so that's really great. So the, the astringent quality, right, that it will take out fluids. So that's really something important to know where we've had these heavy, greasy foods that might kind of you know, just, just let things sit and kind of get muddled and the astringent will pull that out. So if we've got any kind of extra swelling, um, any pain or inflammation, anything like that, the astringent foods really do help to pull out that extra fluid um, and move it through your body so it's not just kind of sitting there, which is great to know. So it is good for edema, swelling, um, that type of thing, even higher blood pressure, right? Because usually we have a bit of water retention happening in higher blood pressure because we don't have a, a good mineral balance happening in the body. Um, or if you've got chronic pain from arthritis, gout, something like that, um, these astringent foods can be really nice in breaking up that stagnation, which in Chinese medicine, pain is stagnation, as well as kind of, you know, moving that fluid through in a nice way to go. So, um, yeah, okay, so that's sour and green, right? I think that's pretty, pretty, um, yeah, innate. We kind of get the green for this time of year. So let's move into some examples of great foods to eat for the spring, according to Chinese medicine. So of course, citrus. And for us, you know, usually that's the, the season for citrus is winter into the late spring. So it's still a nice thing to eat right now. And I think citrus, you know, you can feel what that's like when you eat it, right? It's invigorating and it kind of like makes your eyes pop out a little bit if you if you like um, eating citrus straight. I, I have a confession to make that I'm sure my parents will love that I, <laughs> when I was younger, they would give me slices of lemon to suck on because I just loved it. Um, and I distinctly remember this, this taste and this flavor, right, when it happened where there was this astringent quality where I didn't feel like I had enough fluid in my mouth and then also like very invigorating and kind of up and I was up and moving after that. I used to eat it after dinner a lot, I think. Um, they might confirm or deny that, but <laughs> um, so citrus is really lovely. Um, then we've got a lot of the dark berries, which I think is really, really fantastic. A lot of these come into season right about now um, or by late spring. So the dark berries are the richest in the antioxidants and these polyphenols and fruit anthocyanins, um, lots of big words that just mean antioxidants and really helpful compounds um, that are anti-inflammatory. So what I think is really neat about that is the antioxidants tend to really be great for blood vessels, so circulation, so that's a little bit more fire and summer um, constitution, but also really amazingly helpful for the liver, right? Because we have a lot of stuff that gets processed through the liver. Everything has to get processed through. What we bring in through digestion, um, before the blood goes anywhere else, it goes through the liver to make sure we process out any harmful metabolites, inflammation, bacteria, viruses that have made it past our defenses. Um, and then it cleans the rest of the blood too, all the time. So the liver tends to get burdened, especially in our modern day where there's just a lot of stuff that we have to go through. There's a lot of weird stuff in foods, chemical compounds, fertilizers, beauty products, soaps, all kinds of things. I think I talked about this a little bit in, in another video as well, but all of that sits in the liver. And especially for women too, hormones are processed through the liver. So there's a lot of stuff going on right there. So in the spring, the liver is really trying to get going again, trying to kind of move through some of that winter stuckness um, and really get things 
cleaned out for you. And the berries are a fantastic support for that because they're so anti-inflammatory. They're a little bit sour, a little astringent. They're gonna move through some of that inflammatory fluid that's in there and really help to get um, to help the get to get the liver the support that it needs and they're super tasty <laughs> they're delicious to take so um or to eat so um i know that they can be a little bit expensive but they are just they're such amazing foods for you i'd really encourage you to go ahead and go crazy with the berries especially here in the pacific northwest it's kind of like the berry capital of the u.s um go for it you know and go pick your own if you want um that's a nice and affordable way to do it um, so yeah, so I think the berries are fantastic, um, and usually the darker they are, the tartar they are, um, sometimes that way. Um, and then we've got mango, right, which is, you know, definitely sweet, but a little sweet sour. Um, if you notice, most of these two that have this, that have this really sour quality are fruits. So I think that's interesting because we get a lot of vitamins from fruits. We tend to get minerals from vegetables, which is more of kind of like a kidney time, sometimes fall, winter, um, and then we get a lot of vitamins, so antioxidants, vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin A from fruits. So, and those, all those things are really fantastic for supporting the liver. So, and then they're coming into season. So it's really interesting to see how this all kind of correlates to support these organs that need it the most um, around this time of year. Um, so we do have leek as a vegetable, vinegar, vinegar is huge for that kind of sour um, spring kind of taste. It's really fantastic. Um, my husband is a wood element um, and he loves vinegar <laughs> every time, all the time, on every meal. I mean, I don't think he puts it on sweet things, but <laughs> it's, it's intense. We go through a lot of vinegar in our house. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's kind of funny because it's that sour kind of astringent taste. So he's just kind of naturally using it for his constitution, which I think is pretty interesting and fun to observe when that happens. Um, and then, yeah, we've got tomato and olives, and then, of course, pickled vegetables, right? Pickled vegetables naturally have that kind of, like, sour, tangy taste, and they are so, so good for you. Um, and I actually have a little bit of my own over here on the side. This is my own, um, homemade sauerkraut that's been kind of fermenting for probably a couple months now. Um, it's a dill lemon variety. Super, super good. Um, really delicious. I will make you guys a video on how to make your own sauerkraut. It's so easy. And um, I actually didn't even like sauerkraut before I made my own. I was kind of like, whatever, uh, it doesn't taste very good. It kind of had this weird, like dark, heavy aftertaste to me, the ones that I had from the store. Um, and these are good organic brands too. Um, and then when I made my own, it was like life-changing. So good, amazing, really takes very little time. Um, and, it, and if you noticed, if you looked at fermented food prices as well, they're kind of expensive because they do have to sit, right, and ferment to develop those really good bacterial cultures. So you can't just kind of, you know, make it and then put it out on a store shelf immediately. Um, or you can, but it's not, it's not as great in terms of um, the bacteria cultures that develop. So fermented foods are number one for helping out digestion for helping out the liver they're great you know the probiotic content is just off the charts it's fantastic um there have been people who have sent in samples of their own homemade sauerkraut or fermented foods um and it comes back at least as high as i believe a 10 billion probiotic cap for a tablespoon um which is pretty amazing right because we kind of eat multiple tablespoons usually <laughs> Um, at a time. So it can be really potent and really excellent stuff and it's incredibly easy to make. So I'll take you guys through that um, in the future, definitely. It's really worth your time. Um, and then of course we've got some dairy on here. So if you're dairy tolerant, cheese and yogurt, right? Yo yogurt we know has that sour tang, also great a little bit for bacterial cultures if, if you can handle some dairy. Um, and they have some good alternatives out there now too. I do really like coconut milk yogurt. Um, I think that that tastes the best and um, yeah, isn't, isn't quite as like sugary or starchy as some of the others like rice or almond usually. Um, yeah. And then we've got quinoa, which is kind of a sweet and sour grain. So again, not, not huge on the grains. That's a little bit more like earth time, which is late summer. Um, and then of course sourdough, right? Has sour right in the name. <laughs> Um, and we know that little sour tang that comes with that comes with the food. Um, 
so yeah, so that's kind of a run through from the Chinese medicine perspective. And then of course, you know, you just want to focus on foods that are in season right now um, or coming into season in the spring, right? So rhubarb is a wonderful spring, um, you know, uh, plant and then it's really, it's delicious, right? And it's very sour. <laughs> So it definitely fits in here. Um, you know, we've got a lot of young, tender greens that are coming up. Um, artichoke is typically a spring plant, um, and artichoke is fabulous for the gallbladder. It's really, really wonderful. Um, and I did a video on artichoke last year, actually, so you can check that out if you want to. I just highlight a few reasons why it's good for you and how easy it is to make. Um, yeah, so the one thing that I want to focus on here, too, is that when we think of greens, you know, I think that we think of a lot of fresh, raw greens and then um, maybe even smoothies. Green smoothies are very popular or green juices, that type of thing. Um, and I think it's really important to remember, we talked about this a little bit in the winter foods, that those raw greens, they're okay and they're easier to eat in the spring, but you really don't want to go crazy with them because they're super, super cold. On the digestion so and I don't mean cold just because they've been sitting in the fridge energetically in Chinese medicine things are associated with hot warm cold cool um, and raw vegetables are very very cold so if we're we want to have this digestion kind of warming and we're kind of shaking off that winter um, slowness and stagnation we don't want to stop that progress by eating too many raw vegetables right now because that will inhibit digestion. And when that happens, it makes you feel kind of bloated and heavy and fatigued and a water retention actually, instead of using these lo lovely sour foods to move the water out. Um, and th this is more of a concern for people who, return, who retain damp overall, which happens anytime there's inflammation or if they're more of an earth constitution, um, all of those things can help um, or cause this uh, fluid kind of retention. So yeah, just with the greens, it's okay to do them once in a while, but I would say just really, really pay attention to how good you feel. You know, if you're someone who usually runs hotter or like my husband who is a wood constitution, they can usually handle more of those um, bitter and uh, and raw greens in this time of year. But if you can't, you know, just go ahead and lightly cook them or saute them a little bit. That will neutralize that really cold temperature. And in general, with the green smoothies, I'm not a huge fan, which I know, bad, bad naturopath, right? <laughs> I should do another video for you guys just on that. Um, but yeah, there are other nice ways to get to get greens in. Um, and again, yeah, you can certainly cook them, but if they're really fresh and everything's in season, great, you know, go for it. Again, pay attention to your digestion. If you feel gassy and bloated afterwards, um, you know, maybe maybe dial down dial down the, the raw vegetables at, at this point still. And then as the, the environment around you gets warmer, that's when you're able to handle more of those raw cold vegetables. So it will, your tendency or your ability to handle that will naturally increase through spring and into summer. Here in Seattle, you know, it's really until about summer that that happens, depending on, you know, if we have a little heat wave here and there or not. But um, yeah, so definitely worth worth paying attention to there. And it really helps to harmonize your digestion, harmonize your liver and gallbladder for spring. And you feel better overall when you can eat these foods that are in season and that maybe go along with um, the taste and the color of the season. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching.